It's Tuesday, July 23rd, 2024, and I'm Dave Sobel. Three things to know today. Global IT spending to surge by 7.5% this year, driven by data center systems and IT services. Meta's regulatory showdown, EU customers are denied access to the new multimodal AI model. And legacy tech upgrades costing businesses millions, hindering AI adoption and productivity. This is the business of tech. The CrowdStrike story bumped my Monday market review. You didn't think I forgot, did you? According to Gartner, worldwide IT spending is projected to grow by 7.5% in 2024, reaching a total of $5.26 trillion. Data center system spending is expected to increase by 24% due to the demand for generative AI, while IT services spending is projected to grow by 7.1%. The forecast reflects slower spending in sub-segments such as consulting and business process services. A survey conducted by Jump Cloud reveals that IT teams are increasingly turning to managed services providers and raising their expectations. The survey also highlights concerns about shadow IT, cyber attacks, and the complexity of managing IT environments. The report emphasizes the importance of providers in delivering security, productivity, and cost savings, with 67% of small and medium-sized enterprises planning to increase their investments in MSPs. Additionally, the survey highlights the growing threat of shadow IT, the need for centralized IT management, and the challenges faced by IT teams in maintaining security and managing diverse device environments. Artificial intelligence is expected to have a significant impact on the cybersecurity field in the next few years, with 88% of surveyed professionals stating that AI will significantly impact their jobs. However, the employment prospects for cybersecurity professionals remain strong, with projected growth of 32% from 2022 to 2032. While AI can automate certain tasks and improve job efficiency, it's unlikely to replace fully human skills in the field. Cybersecurity professionals are encouraged to embrace AI and develop AI-related skills to stay competitive in the job market. And many small businesses are still struggling to find job openings, with 37% reporting unfilled positions in June. This shortage of qualified candidates is affecting various industries, including construction, transportation, and retail. Small businesses are raising compensation to attract and retain employees, and some are considering freelancers or unique job incentives. While the situation is improving, businesses should be prepared for increased wages or creative approaches to find quality candidates. Why do we care? The robust growth forecast for IT services, despite those subsegments, indicates sustained demand for managed services, cloud solutions, and IT infrastructure. Addressing shadow IT and cybersecurity represents both a risk and an opportunity. That way, MSPs can differentiate themselves by offering comprehensive, centralized IT management solutions. Of course, simple security done right is the most powerful solution, being both difficult to implement and maintain. And it's not more tools. Today's episode is supported by CoreView. Your customers need your Microsoft 365 expertise, and CoreView has the only M365 management platform designed for MSPs. Manage hundreds of tenants, automate manual tasks, and monitor compliance, all while intelligently comparing to the baseline. With a no-code control approach, CoreView revolutionizes your Microsoft 365 administration. This powerful platform enables automatic reporting and remediation, ensuring optimal performance and security. The best part? You achieve this high level of service without the need for a large workforce, allowing you to focus on growing your business through efficiency. Want to know more? Visit coreview.com slash MSP and find out more. Meta, the parent company of Facebook, will withhold its next multimodal AI model and future ones from customers in the European Union due to a lack of clarity from regulators. This decision sets up a showdown between Meta and those EU regulators and reflects a growing trend among U.S. tech giants to withhold products from European customers. The move is not related to the still-being-finalized AI Act, but rather concerns how Meta can train models using data from European customers while complying with GDPR. The United Kingdom, which has a similar law to GDPR, will still have access to Meta's new model. 
Former President Donald Trump's allies are working on an AI executive order that would launch Manhattan projects to develop military technology and review regulations. The order aims to support Silicon Valley investors and companies and includes creating industry-led agencies to evaluate AI models and secure systems from foreign adversaries. The approach differs from the Biden administration's strategy outlined in a previous executive order that focuses on safety testing for AI systems. The AI Act, a series of rules for technology companies operating in the EU, will come into law on August 1st, 2024. The law bans certain uses of AI tools and sets compliance deadlines for companies. The first deadline is February 2nd, 2025, for the prohibition of certain AI applications. By August 2026, the rules will apply generally to companies operating in the EU with specific compliance timelines for different types of AI systems. Failure to comply will result in fines. NATO has announced plans to establish a new cyber defense center at its headquarters in Belgium to protect allied cyberspace operations. The NATO Integrated Cyber Defense Center will provide alerts about threats and vulnerabilities in cyberspace to NATO military commanders. This move comes in response to the increase in politically motivated cyber attacks since the Russian invasion of Ukraine in 2022. The NICC will bring together civilian and military personnel, as well as experts from the cybersecurity industry, to enhance collective resilience and defense. Why do we care? Years ago, I noted that NATO having declared cyber warfare being equal to physical warfare as a significant milestone in cybersecurity. Well, now we see resources specifically deployed around cyber warfare. I've made two recent quips. First, I often cite how the EU is driving regulation. We're now seeing GDPR play out with product development. Second, I noted that the GOP will need to present its vision of AI regulation. So far, they have not. As the Trump campaign notes, no aspect of future presidential staffing or policy announcements should be deemed official unless they come directly from Trump or an authorized member of his campaign team. I'd really like to know what that policy proposal is. According to a Coresight report, most organizations prefer hybrid IT strategies that combine private and public cloud with co-location data center deployments. The increase in hybrid adoption reflects the need to control IT spending while maintaining scalability and connectivity. CIOs are seeking optimal environments for specific workloads, with variable compute needs benefiting from public cloud provisioning and less fluctuating workloads running more efficiently on-prem. Co-location facilities offer a middle ground for high-density workloads, and many CIOs are deploying generative AI tools in off-prem data centers. Cost and cloud connectivity are driving co-location adoption, but multi-cloud interoperability remains a challenge. Additionally, there is a capacity crunch in major markets, leading to increased rental fees for co-location space. Legacy tech upgrades cost the average business $2.9 million last year, with over two-thirds of businesses investing more than $2 million on maintaining and upgrading legacy systems. Technical debt, including outdated code, negatively impacts the data stack of over three in five IT leaders. Legacy systems also require significant time and resources for maintenance and patching, impacting productivity and the bottom line. Additionally, legacy tech poses challenges for implementing emerging technologies, with up to 25% of legacy systems unable to support AI tools and workloads. Now, why do we care? Well, focusing on cost-efficient, scalable solutions and addressing the pain points of multi-cloud interoperability and technical debts, providers can better serve their clients and position themselves as strategic partners in their clients' journeys. Your major deliverable should be the comprehensive modernization roadmap to help businesses transition from legacy systems to more agile, scalable ones. This includes cloud migration strategies, infrastructure updates, and data management improvements. Emphasizing the long-term return on investment of upgrading those legacy systems and highlighting how modern systems can reduce maintenance costs, improve productivity, and enable the adoption of new technologies. Measure it all, and then measure that impact ongoing. Looking to reach an audience of thousands of MSPs and IT service providers? Put your ad right here on the Business of Tech and be on the show that 64% of MSPs report having listened to. 
a recurring top 50 tech news podcast, there are affordable options for you to reach our audience and we can support any budget. Podcast listeners are more engaged, have a higher level of brand retention, and are more willing to listen to ads here than any other avenues. Want to know more? There's information at mspradio.com slash engage, including a button to book a time to talk. I'm looking forward to that discussion. Thanks for listening. It's International Yada 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 Day, which apparently started back in 2015, and Jerry Seinfeld himself noted it on July 23rd, 2017. So you too can make up a day. Yada yada yada. Have a question you want answered? Take those listener questions, send them in at question at mspradio.com. Be a live show tomorrow, 3 p.m. Eastern on YouTube and LinkedIn. And if you got a comment or a thought on a story, put it on the comments if you're on YouTube or reach out on LinkedIn if you're listening to the podcasts. If you've enjoyed the show, share it with a colleague. It's the number one thing you can do to help with growth. I will talk to you again tomorrow. The Business of Tech is written and produced by me, Dave Sobel, under ethics guidelines, posted at businessof.tech. If you like the content, please make sure to hit that like button, follow, or subscribe. It's free and easy and the best way to support the show and help us grow. You can also check out our Patreon, where you can join the Business of Tech community at patreon.com slash mspradio, or buy our Why Do We Care merch at businessof.tech. Tech. Finally, if you're interested in advertising on the show, visit mspradio.com slash engage. Once again, thanks for listening to me. And I will talk to you again on our next episode of The Business of Tech. Part of the MSP Radio Network.